Hello and welcome to scripting tutorial number 8. In this tutorial you're going to be learning about parameters and arguments. So yeah, this is more of a difficult thing to do, parameters and arguments with functions. So I don't expect you to get it on the first time watching this tutorial. I mean you might, but if you don't then that's okay. You can still just watch it over and over again. Uh, or you can just practice in script. So at the end of the tutorial, just practice in the script with what I teach you this tutorial until you get it. So yeah, let's get started. So parameters and arguments is something you can use in functions. So this is going to be the last tutorial on functions. Okay. So you know how to create a function. Then you just type the word function. Uh, give the function a name give the parentheses on the end and give the um, say put end here to end the function and then we can put some code inside the function to make the function actually do something so let's ma make it print i and we can we know how to call the function so telling the script to do what's in the function so this is how the script works each um, what the script does is it reads line by line each line of code as we go down. So it reads line 1, line 2, line 3. Okay, there's nothing here. So line 4, okay, we can see there's a function here. So we're not going to activate the function yet because we haven't called it. But what the script does is it reads this function and says, okay, I remember this function now. So next time you tell me to call this function, I know that it's a function and I know what's inside it so that I can... Um, yeah, so that the script can do what's inside a function, which in this case is print high. So now the script knows what this function is, it knows the name of it, and it knows it's a function. So next time you call to this function or refer to this function here, like I've done here, um, the script says, okay, so you've told me to call this function, so that's what I'm going to do. It's going to print high because that's what the function does, it prints high, um, or you can do whatever you want in the function, but in this case we just print high to the output and so that's what it does, it does what a function does and then it goes to the next line of code and just carries on from line 9 and downwards so that is how the script works then, so what you can't do is you can't call hello, you can't call the function hello above where you've declared the function you've got to declare the function first and then call the function down here you can't call a function before you've declared it because it will just give you an error, if, if I try it if you just try to press play, um, it gives you an error because you've called the function before you've actually declared it. So this is also a good way of learning how to read errors. It first it gives you the location of the script, so workspace.script. So workspace.script because the script is just in a workspace and the name of it is script. If this if the name of the script, if I change the name of the script to something else, saying hello, yeah, let's change the name of the sc uh, script to hello. Um, I click play, um, workspace.hello, so whatever the name of the script is, it says okay, workspace dot the name of the script, and then this next bit here is the line number of the script, so as you can see 2, line number 2, that's where the error is, line number 2, and next bit is, this is the actual error, so it says attempt to call global hello, so attempt to call the function hello, but the script doesn't know what the function hello is yet because you haven't declared it. You've just told the script, okay, call this function hello, but the script doesn't know what it is yet until line 4. So all callings must be done below where you've declared the function. Okay, so now that we've got that sorted, I can teach you about parameters and arguments. So um, these parentheses here, open bracket, close bracket, that's what it's called, parentheses, they they're not just there for no reason. They they do have a reason to be there. Um, so this is the reason why they're there. So you can put in parameters. So you might not understand this first, but let me explain. Now, what you do with the parameter, you can put variables inside them. So it's like declaring a variable inside them. So right inside the parameter var one, which is just short for variable one. Um, Again, it can be anything you want. I, I just called it var1 for an example. So, when declaring this function here, we've said, okay, the function name is hello, 
and it's got one parameter which is called var1 so I could use this variable inside this function to say I could print var1 I could do whatever I want with this variable inside this function but I can't print var1 outside the function so you know when you've declared a variable inside the parentheses you can only use a variable inside the function you can't use it outside the function so so you know there's a variable now inside the parentheses and you can use it inside a function but we haven't actually set this variable to anything yet we haven't given it a value yet so let's give it a value and this is how to do it when calling a function which has a parameter as you can see here when calling a function with a parameter you need to pass in what's called an argument to the function so this is how to do it inside the parentheses when you're calling the function you just give it a value say 5 so I've called the function and I've passed in an argument value of 5 so what it's going to do is it's going to call this function here hello it's going to set this variable called var1 to the value of 5 so now we know var1 has a value of 5 so anything inside this function say I print var1 it's going to print 5 because I've just given this variable here the value of 5 and now I'm going to print this variable here which has a value of 5 so let's have a see what it does okay so you can see print 5 so let's reset and go back to the script so we can see how parameters work now um, you just declare a variable but it's inside a function and it's called a parameter when when you declare it inside a function see? so so this is a function name hello and this is the parameter var1 and we can only use var1 inside the function so it's not actually that difficult but it is part of a function so these three tutorials that I've done on functions, the first one teaching how to make a function, the second one on returning, and the third one on pr parameters and arguments. So that's just all you need to know about functions really, the parameters, the arguments, and the returning. So I'm going to teach you a bit more on parameters now, making multiple parameters. So you don't only have to have one parameter, you can have multiple parameters in a function. So this is how you do it. If you want to have a second parameter or even a third one, all you've got to do is separate them out with a comma. So I've just have, I have one parameter here and I've got another parameter and they've been separated with a comma. So that's all you do. To have two parameters, just separate them with a comma. And I can use it the same way as I do with the first parameter. I can print var2. But now that I've called, um, I've called this function, I've, all, I've only called with one argument. Because this function has two parameters, I need to pass in two arguments. So let's pass in another argument. We're, so we're going to pass in the value of 10 to this variable here, var2. And we're now going to print var1, which should have the value of 5 when we call it. And we should print var2, which should have the value of 10 when we call it. So let's go ahead and print 5 and 10. Okay, so you can see, printed 5 and 10. Now, remember, again, you can also you can also pass in text values. So I can pass in a, t a string, but for this I'd need a third variable because I've just um, called this function with three arguments, so I need three parameters. So let's print var3. So you see that we've printed 5, we've printed 10, we've printed yes. And that's because we've passed in the values of 5, 10 and yes to these three variables here. So we can use these three variables inside the function. Now this is where it becomes, this is where um, parameters become useful. So what we can also do is, if I take away the third parameter, so I've got two parameters here, um, var1 and var2. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a function called, which my mouse isn't working properly, add. So this is a function, it's called add, and it takes two variables here, and they're both going to be integer values, so numbers. 
var1 and var2. What I want to do is, I want to add these two numbers together. I want to add the numbers 5 and 10 together in this function here. So what this function is designed to do now, is it's going to be designed to add two numbers together. So let's go ahead and do that then. Let's create another variable called answer equals var1 plus var2. Okay, so what we've done here, we've created a variable called answer and we've given it the value of var1 plus var2. And because var1 is equal to 5 when we call the function and var2 is equal to 10 when we call the function, this answer here should be equal to 15 because we've just added them together as we've done here. So let's print answer. It should print 15 because we've just added them. Whoops. What's wrong with this? Oh, that's why. I've tried to call the function hello, but hello doesn't exist anymore. It's I've changed the name of the function to add. So let's change the name to add. So let's add 5 and 10. And click start and look at that, 15. Okay, so yeah, that's how um, how you can use functions with uh, parameters. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a p function called no param eters, and it's going to have no parameters, just a blank parentheses, nothing in there. So I'm also going to create another function called uh, with param it does. <coughs> okay, and I'm going to give it a parameter of number one and number two. Okay, so oh, I'm also going to no, no, I'm not going to create another one. So I'm going to show you the difference between calling functions without and with parameters. Then, so this is just a recap. Then let's call the function no parameters. And let's call the function with parameters. With parameters, and let's give it a value um, four and six. Okay. So, print number one plus number two. So, what we're going to do is let me just print something here. Okay. So what we've done here is we've called this function here with no parameters. So there's no need to put any values in here because this function here doesn't take parameters. So if you put a value in here, the script's going to be like, well, what am I going to do with this number here? You haven't given this function any parameters, so there's no need to give uh, an argument here. That's what this is called. These are called arguments when you're calling a function. So there's no need to put anything in these parentheses here. But when you call a function with parameters, you, depending on how many parameters you have, that's how many arguments you give to the function. So if I had three parameters, let's create another number uh, variable. So we've got three parameters here. So we need to pass in three numbers here. Or it doesn't just have to be numbers, it can be anything. You can pass in a Boolean value, uh, oops, false, can't spell, uh, false, and we can pass in a text or anything. So so yeah, that's that's how you use parameters then. You just pass in the number of um, values to these parameters and then you can only use these values here within the function. You can't go ahead and print number one because it's you've only you're only using these these parameters here inside this function. You can't use it anywhere else in the script because they are they're private to this function only. So you can only use them in this function. So yeah, that's how parameters work then. Um, I'm going to quickly give you another example of returning, just briefly. So if I pass in, so if I call a function with parameters, what I can also do is I can return number. Remember when we went on, we went about on returning in the last tutorial, um, how you can return, you can return values to variables. So let's create a variable called variable one equals equals this function so we've called the function with parameters um, actually let's change it to add again okay so what we're going to do here is 
we've got these two variables here, number one and number two. They've both got values now of four and six. What we're going to do is we're going to return. Um, oops, my mouse isn't working. It's not clicking. Oops. Return number one and number two added together. So we're going to return these two variables here, but we're going to return them added together. So this variable here will be number one plus number two, which is four plus six. So we've just set this variable here to four plus six, which is 10. So the value of variable one here should be 10. Let's go ahead and print variable one and press play. 10. So I'm just going to explain that one more time if you didn't get it. So we've declared a function with parameters. It's called add. It's got two parameters, number one and number two. We've passed in values four to number one because it's the first argument here and six to number two because it's the second one. So you can see that the second argument that we pass has to match the second parameter. So number one equals four and number two equals six. What we've done here is we've done number one plus number two, which is 10. And we've returned 10 to this variable here because we've set this variable one here to the value of add four and six. Okay, we've, ret we've, re we've set the value of variable one to this function here, which returns the sum of number one and number two. So yeah, this is 10 now and then we've printed it and it printed 10. So that is what parameters and arguments and returning does. And this is all the um, tutorials that I had to do on functions. There's gonna be no more tutorials on functions after this. Well, there might be, but it might go more advanced than this, but yeah. So the next tutorial is gonna be much easier than all of this. It's gonna be really easy, the next tutorial, but this the last three tutorials that I've done on functions now um, I know they're a bit hard but it, it just takes practice so if you just keep practicing uh, keep you know changing change different values around see what you can do with it add more parameters um, just keep changing it and experimenting what you can actually do with this so you can even create a function that maybe adds something like 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 together and then what you can do is you can set the transparency of a brick to the sum of these two numbers. So the transparency of the brick would be 0 0.3 as you've added them together. So yeah, do something like that. Um, just experiment with functions and see what you can do with them. So yeah, I promise that the next tutorial will be much easier than this. It will be really easy, the next tutorial. So yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial then. Bye.